Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about making displacement maps with audio layers. All right, guys, so I'm sure if you're in this game, you've probably seen this tutorial this week. Tutorial, you know, John tutorial. Andrew Kramer put out an awesome glitch tutorial on Monday, and he used this texture in it. And what this reminded me of kind of was like an audio spectrum analyzer. And if you guys have watched a lot of my tutorials, you know every once in a while I'll talk about this thing I call the nugget, right? The nugget of information. And that's like some small piece of something that you get an idea from that you can build on and do something else with. So since this looked like an audio spectrum analyzer to me, and I'm watching a glitch tutorial, and I do a lot of glitch tutorials, I was thinking, wouldn't it be interesting if we took the audio and used a visual representation of it to build a map that we can glitch with? So that's what I did. So... Get it, son. So that's what we're going to do. So I've done this a couple of different ways. As you can see with that song that we used a couple weeks ago. Or maybe like this. So you can get kind of a nice little glitch with some beats in it. And these are all set up in a similar way. I would make a project to file available of this, but I can't give you the audio. And I know a lot of people always hate this, but this really requires experimentation. This tutorial is not about getting this specific effect, but more about the idea behind getting it. Most of these are built with just one audio mat, and I'll show you how those look. But this one was built with three, because this one isolates different frequencies. For the most part, if you go into each one of these things, they're basically the same. So as you can see, this comp is cropped in. I have just a shape layer, and under that is the audio layer I'm using. Then that shape layer, I have the audio spectrum effect which is pointing at the audio layer we're using. Let me turn off the other effects on here. So that's what the audio spectrum effect looks like. In this case, I've moved the start and end frequency to fit this piece of music. I have the maximum height cranked pretty high, and I've given it a good amount of frequency bands. I've messed with the thickness of this thing, and I've set the inside and outside of colors to pretty much white. Set to digital in the display options, and that's about it. So this just plays like a spectrum analyzer. When this first comes in, the points that you can move around make this horizontal. I've just made them vertical. Then I'm using the same fast box blur that Andrew Kramer used, setting it to horizontal and cranking the radius up. Then on top of that, I threw a mosaic effect in to blockify these things. And I put a solid composite in because otherwise we're transparent in the background. And if I want to blur things or do whatever in the other comp, I want that to be solid. So outside of this comp, back in our displacement map, I have a couple of things applied to these matte layers. I'm just turn these other two off so we don't have to worry about those right now. So the first thing is, when I have my displacement going, I want it to stay in the middle. I don't want everything to shift over to one side or the other, because then I have to move my comps around. I just want everything to be where I had it in the center. So I'm using just a colorama effect, and I have the input phase set to shift by 180 degrees. If this is set to zero, it'll be black, and then it'll be white when there's audio. So moving this around 180 degrees means that it's going to be gray, and then we'll have black and white parts where the audio is. And then I have an offset on here to kind of shift where this occurs just to modify what it affects in the main comp. I have a motion tile a little bit to stretch it out. I'm running another fast box blur just to smooth that out a little bit more. And then I have a levels over here. This levels here gives us a contrast. Sometimes I'm also using levels in different things to make sure that the noise floor doesn't give us just glitches when there should be nothing happening. But as I said, you're gonna have to experiment with that based on the audio that you pick and the effect that you're going for. These other matte layers are built basically the same way. They just target a different frequency. And the rest of the way these are built are actually the same in the other comps, so I'll just show you one of those. Let's go in the other logo, we'll open up Displacement Map 2, and then we'll click on Audio Mat 2. You can see it's basically the same thing. Colorama that shifts at 180 degrees in the phase. And offset to move this part up so that most of the action happens here. Which you can also do by changing your audio spectrum effect and what range you're checking out. And I have Motion Tile, and most of the rest of these are set this way. These are basically just Motion Tiled this way, and they're also phase shifted. I think it's 95 degrees. And I also have a Fast Box Blur to blur those all together and then the levels for a little bit more contrast. So that's how that's all set up. If we go back out into one of these logo layers, you can see how I have this adjustment layer set up. I have a slider control that basically just changes the horizontal displacement on all of these so that I can change it and modify it at one time. Everything is moving horizontally based on the luminance of my displacement map layer, and that's pretty much it. So of course you don't have to use mosaic or any of these effects. You can take that audio spectrum effect and modify it in any way that you want. You can do like polar coordinates on it, go crazy with it. There's a lot of different stuff that you can do. This is just what I came up with in the short amount of time I've had this week. I did a couple of other ones. There's that uh, things show that everybody recreates this stuff for. What's that called? It's like, um, uh, I think it's like familiar things. Yeah, something like that. I know that kerning is terrible. 
Yeah, I think that's it, right? The familiar things. So this is basically the same thing as that other stuff, except for running a find edges on top of that. And then I ran minimax just to thicken up the find edges. In this case, we don't have multiple displacement. We just have one layer. It's only moved over like nine pixels. And then before that, we're using basically the same kind of colorama setup that Andrew Kramer was using. We're adding the phase from our displacement layer and coloring it based on that. And then we're using that great glow trick that he used, using set mat set to saturation, then applying glow to that, throw a solid composite on the back of that, and then adding it back on top. If you want to know more about that, definitely check out this tutorial. I've linked it below. So I used to run this Tumblr site that had like these stock photos on it that, you know, it was like stuff that who, you know, why would you ever use this kind of thing? So anyway, I was thinking this might be neat in a music video. And I thought I had some green screen footage for something, but I, I didn't. So I went and grabbed some stock footage of a lady who clearly knows how to play guitar and threw it over a background that was moving and stuff and then just glitched out the background. I mean, look, she's like just, that's great technique. So, you know, I thought that was interesting. I mean, I'm sure you could go off and spend like five minutes and make something, you know, good. But um, I think this lady needs some backup dancers. So let's try that. <laughs> What the fuck? Uh, that was that was weird. Um, now maybe you can jump in your like 2000 Mitsubishi Eclipse and do something better. Anyway, um, that's it. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you check out the blog at workbench.tv for more great content. And as always, I am Joe and I will see you guys next week. Bye. Days when I couldn't live my life without you, without you.